get back to some boring subjects. Understand the risk to our country. Freedom brings people together. You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to We Are Libertarians. My name is Chris Spangle. You're listening to episode 364 here on the We Are Libertarians Network. Joining me is Harry Price tonight. We're going to be talking about the life and death of Jeffrey Epstein. And uh, we're going to give you uh, some facts and kind of fill you in. And uh, we'll, we'll see if we're putting on our tinfoil hats. So it's August 14th, 2019. And we will uh, be right back after this disclaimer. Warning, this show is for adults, produced by semi-adults. So the language is sometimes strong and offensive. Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh. Welcome to We Are Libertarians, where our goal is to help you sound smarter while talking to your friends. We examine current events from a libertarian perspective while treating modern politics with all of the irreverence it deserves. There has been lie after lie. We toss out the screaming heads, put people before political parties, and give context to the news to make you think. Now, here's our host, a 15-year veteran of politics and media, Chris Spangle. Welcome to the program, everybody. My name is Chris Spangle, and uh, we're so excited. I'm fading down the wrong thing. Uh, we're so excited that you are here tonight. We are, uh, we've got a great show. We're going to be talking about uh, Jeffrey Epstein. There's a lot about Jeffrey Epstein out there, and you guys are probably all confused as to who he is and what he does and what he's been up to, which not a lot of it was good. Um, but so we're going to clarify some of that for you. And joining me tonight is my co-host, Harry Price. Harry, how are you? Going good, going good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Your, your studio is coming along nicely. Uh, you have not driven down. You're still are you, you're still protesting the temperature of the studio. I am, and it's. I want small, just small changes. One, one. Uh, I demand the fireplace to be on at all times. Uh, two, the temperature at least sixty nine at at the minimum sixty nine degrees. It's sixty six right now. It's frigid. It feels amazing. It feels so good in here, and you're not allowed. You're not welcome. Right? Uh, my third demand of the blanket. I have heard I've gotten the blanket finally. You do. You have. There is a blanket here, but I've washed it and it has been used by another. So, oh no! Oh no! I've given. I've. I've gifted it to someone much more precious than you. Oh no! Uh, may all to, right. May have to get it blessed. You're. You're really not coming down because a. I. I had too much going on yesterday, and so we. I had some personal stuff, and so we moved, and I said, "Hey, let's do it tonight," and you said, "Okay," and I said, "Don't worry about coming down." Let's just do the Skype thing, which we get a good show out of it. And what you have to understand is uh, there is a conspiracy in Indianapolis. So we're going to put on our tinfoil hats. This is clearly our conspiratorial show. So on September 1st, there is something called the red line that is beginning. And that red line, Harry, you need to get a new chair. That's ridiculous. You are. This is a mostly professional broadcast and listen to you last oh my all right i'm just gonna harry i'm gonna kick you off this is the best part i can just remove harry from the zoom and it's like he's no longer here he last week it was his fire his smoke detector was chirping and then this week it's your chair what are you doing over there right just try to be a professional please okay. so we have something called the red line here in Indianapolis starting. So this, this, and maybe you live in a moderately big city. This is the 12th largest city, Columbus, Ohio, or Cincinnati or Portland or well, Portland's a bad example here, but you live in an up, upwardly mobile Midwestern city mm -hmm. and you hear the city fathers all the time say, well, we, we need to attract young talent. We need to keep them from moving to bigger cities like Chicago uh, we need to invest in the city infrastructure so the young people stay. And so we need mass transit here in Indianapolis, even though we're called the crossroads of America. If you look at the, the, uh, the, the map, it's basically a giant loop of interstate called 465. And then you've got spokes going east, uh, east and west, north and south. Uh, diagonally, we've got like 18 interstates that all intersect here. 
this is the second like b basically we have the indianapolis motor speedway because that's where the motor motor industry did all of its testing like indy was an enormous automobile city back in the day second to chicago to uh detroit i mean uh and you know we we're just a we're an automobile state like if you Harry, if you don't have a car here, you're kind of screwed here in Indianapolis. Yeah, pretty much. It, well, also depending on where you live. But, yeah, you are screwed if you do not have a car. Right. At the same time, owning a car in Indiana is is easy. It's right. There's tons of parking, so you're, you're not abused because you have to park your car. You they work in the city center. You work in the very core, the most congested, supposedly, part of the city. Part of the city. Mm -hmm. Like, Is it difficult for you to get to and from work and park? No, no, it's about 20 to 30 minutes. Traffic can break it a little over 30 minutes. I park in a very bougie parking spot because I don't want to walk. So I'm like really close in downtown. And I pay about $180 a month to park there because I don't want to walk. Yeah, exactly. I used to work right across from the city market. I could park in five minutes on the street. Like there's tons of parking everywhere. And I know we're a growing city, but at the same time, it's like, they, they have this idea, and, and Christopher in the chat nailed it. People want fast internet, internet, entertainment, and they want money. They want low taxes. Mm -hmm. They want, they want the, like, like those murals that they can stand in front of, like in Nashville with the wings, where you've seen all your basic bitch friends take that picture. Yeah, stuff you for know? the gram, stuff for Instagram. Exactly. They don't, they don't care about mass. We have these blue cars, these electric cars that took up all these parking spaces, and they've been an unbelievable failure here in the city they have these bike lanes which barely anybody uses destroyed new york street beautiful one-way right. street in and out of um, indianapolis uh, downtown and they destroyed it with a bike lane right now maybe we're just troglodytes and we don't get it harry we just don't understand man we just don't get that the the city's growing and, and this is an investment for 50 years from now and our population doubles and it's we're just behind the times but you know, so they, they finally managed to pass uh, mass transit here in Indianapolis. I think they did it on a referendum vote. Mm -hmm. And so what did they do? What did we get? Did we get a cool monorail, Harry? Did we get a, like an electric train system? Did we, you know, like in, uh, a, 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 you know, Austin, Texas has one interstate north and south. They have legendary traffic problems and they have a mass transit system there uh, that nobody rides, that nobody yeah, uses. Nobody there. rides. But it's, you know, it's like a cool little electric train system, I think. What do we get, Harry? We've got the worst thing imaginable. We got a electric bus system going through the center of the, the town. A bus. A, a city bus. bus. Electric bus. What? We have a bus system and it's failing. It's $55 a seat. So basically every person's paying $1.50 for their seat but should pay $55. Correct. Barely, barely anybody rides it. I mean, the people who ride the bus are the people who have to ride the bus because they can't afford a car because of their financial situation. Or Dewey's. Right, right. We didn't build the red line, bus line, for those people who use the bus and need the bus and have poor service because it's underfunded. We built the red line from the center of the city mm -hmm. straight up north to the richest part of the city mm -hmm. where all the bougiest people live. Right. They can ride the bus system. Correct. So you're telling me that my bougie hoity toity uh, family and friends that live in Broad Ripple are going to get on the bus and ride it downtown. How long do you think that those people, and I'm by them, by those people, I mean the uh, upper echelons, the middle class, the upper middle class, the lower of the wealth class in the city how do you think they're gonna ride how long do you think they'll ride the bus i think that bus is going to get tons of rides on fridays between 3 a.m right. <laughs> right. and then they're gonna see one guy jacking his meat on the bus line and they're never gonna ride it again because they don't feel safe exactly exactly or they're just gonna ride it during the summer and spring and maybe certain times in the fall but the moment it hits negative 30 then there's a foot of snow no one's riding that damn thing. Yeah, a lot of people, the reason mass transit works in some cities in this way is that they have parking garages at stops or they have parking spaces at stops. Mm -hmm. They put this in the middle of two of the busiest streets, College and Meridian Street. And removed parking. And 38th Street, removed parking, 
removed access mm -hmm. and they there's you have to walk i mean people are not going to walk half a mile in the rain to go to the bus stop i mean it, it, it would work if you had the ability to park at the end of a station and ride all the way but i just can't imagine so traffic here has been an absolute living hell mm -hmm. because they've been ripping up the the middle of the city the two busiest uh non-interstate roads mm -hmm. for the last uh few months they've been doing their regular patching around the city mm -hmm. that they normally do and then all those interstates that i mentioned they've been shutting them down for days on end and doing god knows what to them i mean i will say as much as it has been an enormous pain in the butt the roads the interstates here are way better it's much smoother uh, you know, my, my interstate, I live right off of an interstate. I, I'm two minutes from it. I hop on, head north, head south, whatever. That It was a big pain in the butt when they just shut that down on the weekends, but you kind of like whatever. Well, so Harry, I live on the south side, and Harry lives on the east side of the city. And so north the interstate, side. yeah, so the city that you, and Harry lives right by where I work. So I've been going these crazy routes thanks to Waze, mm -hmm. which Harry, how does Waze know? Because <laughs> it's powered by Google Maps, and there's a lot of people, and it's also powered by people who use it. It's just how how do they know that there's a cop there, and how do they know what speed it's going? It's magic. Waze is magic. Uh, no, people mark it. So basically, when you drive by and you see that cop there, you clip it on your Waze app, and so everyone else knows that there's a cop there. <laughs> Chris and Christopher Thomas in the group says, "Biggest generation of shun shut ins want buses." LOL. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's true and so the interstate that i like if i wanted to go to work right now uh, drive up north to harry's that interstate shut down and so gridlock all through the rest of the city and then in a week and a half driving from where harry is down to me is going to be shut down for two weeks yep. and so it's just like traffic everywhere is a nightmare and so i'm like let's just you know take this month as they're doing the interstate between my place and yours Mm -hmm. Just do a little Skyping. And we may do this. I mean, this is it's nice. It's easy on you. It's low impact. I hate that you have to drag your butt down here all the time from your family. You know, it gives you an extra couple hours with them and yep. you know, maybe a little love making time, you know. So uh, that's that's part of the reason. But yeah, the the so the grand conspiracy is, and this was from a state senator saying this on my Facebook wall, there is something called traffic calming. Uh, let me see if I can find the post because this was absolutely fascinating. So, oh, okay. yeah, this, uh, this state senator said, I, th I have heard that they are doing all of this road construction right now in the two months to the lead up of the red line to frustrate everybody so that they will jump on the mass transit system so they can begin to, um, get people to move to mass transit that they are actually intentionally creating some of this traffic and so andrew smith a local media guy wrote this uh, and as, as a comment traffic calming is the latest fad du jour in the urban planning world they admit it's intentionally creating traffic jams to slow down traffic to quote make the neighborhood more walkable the end goal is to frustrate you out of your car so you'll either A, move to a dense stack and packed neighborhood condo downtown or near a transit line, or B, use transit walk bike. We're forced to have it on us out in this rural county as US 40 is being halved from four lanes to two lanes through the most populated areas of the county, and it's being pitched as a, quote, safety measure. It'll stay four lanes in the sparsely populated areas of Greenfield. That's What's interesting is the biggest advocates for traffic calming are also environmentalists who say nothing about the extra pollution that happens with cars idling because they're just hung up at a stoplight. Because most people don't want to get out of their cars, nor do they want to live in a stack and pack condo downtown. And I read that, I was like, and I looked it up and I was like, holy crap, this is legitimate. This is a real thing. He's, he, this is like, exists, Harry. All right, so that's crazy. That's so. Because I, I, I kind of heard about someone saying this, and it just sounded like a very weird, um, you know, like yeah, conspiracy theory. Like they're just doing this to force us to, you know, to ride mass transit. Just like uh, 
they've messed up the roads for the last couple of years and to fix them and all everyone's been dealing with potholes damaged trims and tires and been fed up with dealing with their cars because the road has been awful so now we've got all this added expense of frustration with our cars and now that people but no i can see that probably working in some other cities not indianapolis that's just not going to work right be, be, one because they've screwed this up because government did it if they were even planning this for a minute they screwed it they screwed it up one because they bought these stupid chinese buses that can't charge and they can't run on their entire charge so they had to create mobile charging platforms second thing they screwed up which no one saw this one coming what's happening over in china since these buses are for china and other parts are for china Woo! good luck getting parts now this is going to be great it's going to be amazing yeah so that's what's going on, but uh, yeah, that's why Harry's been kind of remoting in, and, and, and here's where here's where we're at. And they take the the bus system that is there currently, the diesel slash hybrid powered bus system. It would take about two and a half hours from uh, for me to get from the bus from my house to Chris's, because it is about an hour bus ride downtown. And another hour bus ride down to him. Because for some reason, whoever designed the bus system decided all buses should go downtown. Right. And so, Harry, the bus transit depot, the, the switch off point, is literally 10 minutes north of me, mm-hmm. if, if that. So, Harry's maybe a 20, 25 minute drive away. So, yeah, it's, it's just not, it's not worth it. I mean, people... You know, and, and one person I talked to said, yeah, I'm going to ride this bus line because then I get, you know, let's say it takes, I'm going to be in traffic for 45 minutes or I'm going to be on the bus for 45 minutes. I can walk close to a station. I can get to work easy and take one of those little bird scooters downtown, you know, and I get 45 minutes. I basically get an hour and a half of my day back that I can read or look at memes or whatever. So I do get that. I mean, so I'll be curious to see if it works, but the the massive shutdowns like they shut down during gen con which is one of our bigger conventions they shut down 70 downtown which was the main way that people go from the airport to the convention center i mean it was just insane like they've just really done bizarre they've they've shut down major interstates at the same time and then they close down like i I get off as a detour off on meridian street the other day and that's shut down. It's just wild how much is shut down. It's it's really like to a point that I've never seen it this way. Right. Yeah. Um, even Nice was sitting there like whoever's planning these roads was just drunk. Um, he was kind of like locked out of the north side of Indianapolis for a couple of times. He had to drive all the way around. I found that it was easier to drive all the way up to Fortville to Gill North and up to uh, Anderson. Yeah. It's wild. So, uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much for listening to We Are Libertarians. We are, for those of you who may not have heard us before, my name is Chris Spangle. That is Harry Price. And uh, we get together on Tuesday nights usually and post the main show on Wednesday. And it's, uh, you can hear it live. We, we tweet out when we go live so you can listen on uh, Spreaker, so on, a, on an audio stream. You can watch it if you're $10 a month subscriber, and so you can comment back and join the chat. And what that Patreon money does, and, and, and there's tiers all the way up to $100 a month, We Are Libertarians is unique in the liberty world, in my opinion. Uh, we are reaching out to people who are not necessarily uh, libertarians, although most of our listeners probably are libertarians, but we're here to really give your average person an understanding of what's going on in the news in a fun and conversational way. And along the way, kind of explain to you what a libertarian is and what we believe. And we're a great show to share with your friends and say, hey, uh, you heard all about this Epstein stuff and, and pass that along. So there's a lot of new libertarians being created through We Are Libertarians. And so please support our work. And a Patreon is the best way to do that. That's the really the best, best way to do that. Um, you can join at wearelibertarians.com. There's a big red support button uh, or a Patreon button there, and you can join us. Uh, if you don't want to do Patreon, there's PayPal, there's bitcoin even there's all kinds of different ways that you can join in on supporting us uh so i i appreciate everybody that does especially our 100 hundred dollar a month subscribers uh intern ed brehob uh jeff bennett jason doolittle the libertarian coalition go and like their page uh christy Avery and craig DaCosta. thank you guys so much for being 100 hundred dollar a month patrons 
You guys are the wind beneath our wings and giving us the ability to do this. We uh, use a lot of tools. We're a big platform. We have all kinds of different tentacles and shows. Just go take a look at wearelibertarians.com and you'll see how much we do. And all that costs money to, to really support. So when you support the show, you are supporting a network of about 40 libertarian content creators. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, everybody from Brian Nichols to Boss Hog of Liberty to uh, Ginger Arky to The Chris Spangle Show, which you can now hear on Saturdays. Uh, Harry, our, our quarterly journal, lots of support goes into all of these shows. All costs money. And that's where all of it goes. So we appreciate everybody who does donate. So, I, I Harry, I don't know about you. Let's before we get into kind of the details, of Jeffrey Epstein. <clears throat> I have said for a long time, and again, I have been proven right, Harry. Mm -hmm. I've said for a long time that when you try to prohibit something it makes it spread because it becomes uh, seductive. And much like alcohol in the 20s, speech is the same way. We have all become conspiracy theorists. I, I said it after that guy got arrested right before the election with the crazy van and there was nothing but a, a myriad of conspiracy theories. Uh, you know, the banning of Alex Jones from platforms and other people who are conspiracy tinged uh which the the label conspiracy theorist we have a problem with do we not harry correct yeah because it's it, it has a mis it's a misnomer it, it just meant to silence somebody who's just questioning a narrative most of the it's time majority of the time dismissal yeah yeah that's all you're doing with it uh, because there's been conspiracies that have one been proven cor correct now they are you could you could you um crap test conspiracy theories you could look at them and go like nope that doesn't matter that that's you know that's too that's too out there it doesn't make any sense and then right. there's ones you know you know that's that's perfectly fine but you're you know you're willing to have the conversation and you know you can entertain facts yes so not a huge fan of that particular term i do not consider myself a quote conspiracy theorist um but i i do i don't buy the kennedy story i think there's way more to that I don't really know what happened with Vegas. That Vegas shooting seems real suspicious. Um, but uh, And I, I think that, that there was a false flag attack in Syria. That's kind of my roster of conspiracies. I mean, so I'm not, I'm not somebody that is conspiratorial. Um, but I do have to say that the first reaction to Epstein's death was, really? You're telling me that the day... Three weeks after his suicide attempt, you take him off of suicide watch the night that all these documents, these trove of documents are released from his past cases and you just leave him alone and then he dies and the cameras just happen to not be working and the guards are being dismissed. Like, really? Uh, so, I don't know. What was your first reaction when you heard it, Harry? Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, no. All right something happened in his prison cell someone must have got to him in this prison cell he thinks he committed suicide someone probably like killed him but then you start like and because that's just what you get from reading the headlines you just go like oh somebody must have got to him oh suicide okay so you know something could happen and then you start delving deeper and you start getting in the other layers of this awful nacho chip of the, the conspiracy theory. And that's when it starts laying it on thick because it's the cameras aren't working. The uh, somehow he hung himself in a cell where there's nothing really to hang yourself on. Like, honestly, the cells are meant to be designed. So people can't do this after he was also taking off of uh, suicide watch. Then they moved the, his uh, cellmate, out of his uh, away from him even though this was a cellmate from his previous I, uh, suicide attempt that did call the guards when he was trying to commit suicide did you see like, the size of that guy too did you see the cellmate yeah, that he had yeah like oh, big his, boy. his arms are the suicide attempt like it was like come huh, so that's how he hung himself i mean if that guy were my cellmate and giving me the old what for i'd want to it's suicide too, to be honest. <laughs> Former New York cop who had committed murder or been convicted of murder. Mm -hmm. And he had, I mean, somebody was sneaking some steroids 
Uh, I think it was Joe Rogan said he probably killed Epstein for the Clintons in exchange for a fresh round. <laughs> <laughs> like he was, he, but I guess he was the one who, you know, called for help in the first suicide attempt. And uh, he, he, they, they got along fairly well. He was not the one that he, they were not separated because there was animosity from what I read. Um, yeah. I mean, I just, you know, this is the 56, person connected to the Clintons that has committed suicide. I don't know about you, but it seems just a little fishy. Just a little fishy. And it's always fishy because like, like I said, it's the, it's the cameras not working. What's next. We're just going to find out. We're just going to find his passport in the cell too. Right. Right. (laughs) Yeah. So there's, there's just a lot of, it was the first death in this jail. Like this jail had had, uh, El Chapo in it. <laughs> you know, now if there's anybody who can escape a prison, it's good old El Chapo. There's billions of dollars in his and his Mexican buddies. I mean, so it, it just seemed super suspicious in the beginning. And this was the first time that I've seen so many mainstream journalists question the official narrative. Just Twitter that day was crazy. People just started saying, like, I mean, mainstream journalists like John Harwood from, I think, CBS like, or CNN just going, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, come <laughs> like, on. Like, all the rational people in the world just kind of took the day off. And, mm-hmm. and it really was – Alex. so I heard Chuck Todd say, talking about this, and Chuck Todd was, of course, saying this is all Donald Trump's fault that everyone's a conspiracy theorist now – all the all the right wingers and Donald Trump just push these conspiracies all the time, and this is how you end up with a society that just doesn't believe in anything because everything's fake news. And I just went, "You fucking tool! Like, don't you get that because you guys have made this push to eradicate people from when you basically ban Alex Jones, everybody starts to go, well, what is it about that guy that's bannable?" And it makes him way more enticing. And when he says, uh, they're just trying to ban me because I'm dangerous, it really lends to what he's trying to say. Whereas Alex Jones was just like, if anybody in your Facebook ever shared an InfoWars link, I don't know about your your feed, Harry, but people would jump on that and just go, InfoWars, really? Like, you just knew not to share an InfoWars link or really even go look at InfoWars because it was just known to be fake news. Now... It's a major media outlet. It's setting the template because they, by trying to get them taken off of social media, they've become a destination. Like more people, I have listened to Alex Jones in the last two years somewhat regularly. Mm-hmm. And hold on, the cat, see, Harry, you're, you have your <laughs> chirping thing, and the cat is getting her paw stuck in my shirt. Uh, <laughs> well, like, see, so, oh. but, but hold on, let me finish that because Mittens <laughs> distracted me. Alex Jones, you know, has been pushing the pedophile stuff forever. And, you know, it's like, oh, oh, oh." Jeffrey Epstein dies. It's like all of this just ends up feeding into exactly what he's talking about. It's like it's not that Donald Trump is president and that, you know, the fake news stuff has proliferated. It's like Chuck Todd's completely missing the diagnosis. He's just looking at the symptoms and he's saying, you know, the fatigue is caused by bad blood. Instead of like, no, fatigue's caused by your diabetes. You know, there's not, it's the fact that Alex Jones has been censored and removed from these platforms that we've all just become, it was, by, by doing this show today, Harry, and saying, I don't believe that this was a conspiracy at all, mm-hmm. I'm going to get more shit because I'm not being a conspiracy theorist in this episode, just as Jason Stapleton in his excellent episode about this got shit for his episode like you're to be cool you have to be conspiratorial now why people get that prohibition doesn't work (laughs) they'll never understand that well the the thing is it's like the other thing that makes alex jones now a little more attractive to some people because like like, i was a huge info award says when i first got out of high school because it was kind of neat and you know but the thing is he's also been right 
I'm not saying like he's like right. He's actually, I don't know if he actually has sources actually had people talk to him, but the whole government spying on him and knowing about prism and stuff like that proven correct on that one. Um, he also had the DC Madam on his case and the DC Madam somehow committed suicide as well. When she was trying to expose some of the, these prostitution rings and was also on, on info wars. I don't know. I wonder how many, I kept telling people it's like, this is great. It was like, this is par for the course. Did you not understand? Did you not look at the DC Madam case? You know, right. you don't know about her? Oh, because she shot herself in the back of the head. Sorry, yeah, murder, well, suicide. Alex, I mean, Alex Jones was the first person to kind of talk about there's something in the dust for the 9-11 responders. It's toxic. Right. It's toxic. Mm-hmm. And nobody, everybody dismissed him at the time. And now, they're, you know, John Stewart's crying and everyone's jump jumping too. Uh, Alex Jones is also the report about Fast and the Furious and is going after, um, was shooting border, border guards because of Fast and Furious, that uh, the gun running exports of the united states of running guns to mexico that was broken by alex jones that was a, uh, that was a conspiracy theory by alex jones let us never forget i don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay yeah is, and then what has happened to the frogs i like women i never sucked any ding-dongs <laughs> uh and who can so, who can ever forget this classic? Move, bitch! Get, get out, out the way. way! Get out the way, bitch! Get out the way! Move, bitch! Get out the way! I'm sick of being social engineered. It's not funny! So, yes, Alex Jones is ultimately very entertaining and uh, always worth the watch. I don't, I don't really believe much of what he says, but, you know, I think everybody's kind of looking around going, I, I, so here's the foundational principle of, like, the Alex Jones worldview. Um, what Alex Jones believes essentially is that there's a, a secret cabal that is ruling the earth. It's, it's the bankers, it's the government officials, it's military people, it's, you know, uh, media members, and they're all part of this global elite. And what they're trying to do is to build a globalist government that will essentially enslave the earth. And it will become sort of a neo-feudal global state where we become servants, feudal servants of this globalist elite. And they want to diminish the population in strength, intelligence, to make them more pliable, to hook them on drugs like Soma, you know, or antidepressants, uh, you know, in Soma, in which what was uh, Brave New World was Soma, I think. Um, to make and put fluoride in the water that will make people more pliable and 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 just co- some more dasa, more sheep like. Correct, like yeah, Harris, like Harrison Burr's run. Everyone average, bring everyone down. We don't want right. super smart people, super better people. You know, that's that's what he believes, or we want, we want to think he does. Genetically yeah. modify the food, and so all of this makes people sicker and they die quicker, and so we we have basically mass. Uh, eventually mass starvation on a global scale disease to decrease the population so it becomes a manageable amount of people for uh, this global elite to rule over and the way that the global elite uh, control each other is through child child sex trafficking and child pornography and to be initiated into the global elite is to have sex with kids on camera basically because it's the last thing it used to be homosexuality or it used to be other things but Mm -hmm. as that has been normalized that the the last thing that the global elite and i'm not saying i believe any of this i'm saying this is what the alex jones worldview is um is through child sex trafficking getting them on camera using blackmail essentially to keep so if somebody gets out of line you know for instance george hw bush his entrance into the global elite was managing the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And so he could never get out of line or get out of control from the rest of the group because then they would expose him as having been a a part of this murder. So, so Bill Clinton or, or now Donald Trump, they, they have tapes of him having sex with kids. And so they get to stay in the global elite as long as they behave or else they'll be exposed in these pedophile rings. And that's why at the heart of it was Pizzagate and John Podesta and Tony Podesta, and they have ties to, to, to everybody under the sun. And uh, Jeffrey Epstein was sort of a shadowy figure for a long time who had made money in a lot of nefarious ways. 
And a lot of that is through what people think is blackmail. And one of the conspiracies is that uh, he is essentially a, he is like the gatekeeper for entrance into the global elite over the last 30 years and has these massive troves of tapes of people like Bill Clinton having sex with underage girls. And to take the keystone down was to take down the entire globalist system and uh, strike a blow for nationalism or, or liberty, depending on your persuasion of what you believe. And so is any of that true? Who knows? I, I would say from kind of looking at Jeffrey Epstein's life and this death, a lot of it seems like a cigar is just a cigar and he was a shitty dude and he's not the keystone to bringing down this global government. But this kind of thinking about, you know, and then there's that weird temple and there's Satanists and there's you know, spirit cooking and, uh, and all that stuff that you remember from 2016 um, but that's, that's like, that's why Jeffrey Epstein essentially is kind of the, the driving force of a lot of these conspiracies. You're not going to see people who are pushing Epstein conspiracies saying a lot of that out loud because they don't want to seem nutty. A lot of that sounded crazy to a lot of you. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the, at the heart of that movement is making memes about the de death of Jeffrey Epstein. I share them like crazy because they're funny. I think they're funny. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I just – I tend to look at all that and go, I don't think that there's some grand star chamber of global elite sitting around having a conversation about how they're going to dominate the world and create neo-feudalism. I think they all just share a lot of bad ideas and are marching towards the same end without really understanding kind of where they're headed. So – um, which is basically a, a, a zombie system of global economics that kind of keeps everybody stagnant. So the current rich who designed the system stay rich and you and I get pushed down into lower income brackets. Hmm. That's sort of where I, I land on it. But I don't think that it's like some big grand plan that Henry Kissinger started 40 years ago and it's like, I'm going to make them all slaves. You know, George Soros, well, I'll leave him out of this, but... Uh, yeah. So when so when like the Koch brothers and George Soros collaborate, everybody on these uh, on these it, it, within this worldview goes, "See, I knew they were in cahoots." I know. Yeah. With which the real thing you need to fear is Jeff Bezos and the Prime Jacked Army. Uh, you see how jacked he is. That's that's someone who's trying to command an army. Um, robots. <laughs> <laughs> you got to understand like what side of the war you're going to be on, and uh, that's who I really fear is Amazon. Uh, it's a scary on the, on the world on the amazon um, world domination tour there it's a really no that's a conspiracy theory that's not a conspiracy theory you can get on that and go to i hope you don't find this offensive but someone recently said to me uh harry's worldview was it his worldview harry's outlook on life is darker than his skin <laughs> <laughs> it's just realistic it's well you just take it to a place that gets scary but you know sometimes that's necessary so okay. HR says that at work. They're like, all right, Harry, bring it down. We're trying to work. Keep the mood up. <laughs> There's only so much alcohol here. <laughs> oh, man. So, so that's sort of like that, that's the behind the scenes of kind of what the conspiracy theories. Now, I don't know what conspiracy theories you've heard about Epstein. I, I've heard, you know, obviously the Clinton body count. Right. You know, he, 56 associates of the Clintons have died. I heard a stat, and I don't know if this is true. I, I didn't get time to look it up. Uh, I heard it on a podcast. It was like in 1996, 60% of the bandwidth of the internet was sharing the Clinton body count video. <laughs> Which, if you think about it, <laughs> uh, maybe you can Google that and look and see if that's true. But 1996, you know, Clinton's president. And basically, you know, video or, or, or images or whatever really wasn't around. But 60% of the bandwidth on the internet was the Clinton body count video. Um, if you want some background on that, the impeachment episode has some show notes with a bunch of videos uh, and documentaries that kind of outline that, that uh, you know, then the opposite reaction had to happen. Donald Trump had him killed he's 
you know, he's in a justice system, a justice facility. And so his henchman, William Barr, runs that facility. And so Trump had him killed to keep his secrets hidden. Joe Scarborough tweeting out that it's Russian-like, either implying the Russians did it or Donald Trump is becoming a Russian-like Putin who's poisoning his enemies. Um I've seen the Mossad did it, that Jeffrey Epstein was, you know, was controlled by Israel. That's where he got all of his money. And so the Mossad, which is like the CIA of Israel, came in and extracted him. And that body that you see in the photos has a curved nose as opposed to a straight nose. So they used a body double. Um, the, the funniest one that I heard was today. And it is that Jeffrey Epstein is... It's all smoke and mirrors, and he was propped up by the, the government, and there were victims, but he's been an asset for the government, either the CIA or the FBI, for 20 years as a way to track conspiracy theorists online. And so they have allowed him to go free and have used him as bait, essentially, so they can track and see who the conspiracy theorists are and so when they finally crack down on conspiracy theorists in the next five years and uh, pass a bunch of bills to get rid of conspiracy theorists on the internet, they know exactly where to start first. So that one was the most elaborate one that I heard. Basically, anybody who doesn't believe in Google's worldview, uh, they are going to get you, and they've been tracking you, and this is wildly, wildly... Um, <laughs> hilarious which, which isn't so far-fetched because the fbi it has isn't been, uh, are you high are you hold smoking on, weed hold on, hold on. i'm gonna go basic assault on you real quick <laughs> <laughs> the, the fbi has been known to run child pornography servers to try to catch child sure yeah. uh free talk live talked about it and <laughs> they got raided by the fbi the next day right for child pornography after reporting on the FBI's child pornography service. Okay. So, hope you got your... Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying the honeypots don't exist. Yeah. It's, but it's you know pot. about the honeypots, Harry. Yeah. The, um, what is it? Occupy Wall Street was a honeypot for activists and hackers and stuff like that to get them out in the open. To get people out right. in the open. All away from the computer screen so they can match people up. What's the definition of honeypot for those who are new to that? Honeypot, it just it goes the same phrase of you catch more flies with honey than you do vinegar. Honeypot is just basically the idea of st getting something like a sweet prize and you'll make someone go after that. Um, right. You do it with networking where you've got this is, you know, you put a server on the network going like this server has all the R&D secrets, but in reality it just has tons of alarms that shouldn't be doing anything. So the moment someone tries to drop a shell on that sucker and the CPU and everything else starts spiking on it, all your alarms go off. Right. No yeah. one should touch it. That's, that's just sitting there. That server's just sitting there. What, what conspiracy theories have you heard? With the Epstein one? Over oh, yeah. Epstein's death. Oh, I, either way, yeah. yeah. The craziest ones like i was here like uh i like i really like the ones where everyone's predicting how the guards are going to die mm -hmm, right you know like <laughs> how everyone in this place is going to freakishly just start dying off the next six months like plane crashes suicides the uh oh random shooting uh, or like some sort of wake us out fire bombing accidental fire bombing uh right Makes you wonder what Waco had under the Clintons, but no. <laughs> I don't want to make fun of that. That was that's awful. Uh, if you, if only thing you know about, like if you're most thirty year, year old or twenty year old somebody, and you don't know anything about Waco, oh, Waco. you you will have forever. You will have a different view of your government after Waco. That's for sure. Right. It was like, why don't you trust the why don't you trust the government? Or some goes, why do you need an AR fifteen? Waco. Waco. <laughs> Ruby Ridge is just as egregious, but Waco is really just way, way worse. Waco was awful when the sheriff of the town said, hey, don't go up there with a tank. We'll go up there with a suit. We'll go up there unarmed, and we'll talk to these people. Nope. Get in the tank. Strides the hill. Yeah. That's so the awful part about it. Alex Jones got, you know, really cut his teeth on Waco, by the way, too. So you really, like, to – and this is my thing with 9-11, for instance. Like, for, for the government to have done 
and and basically plant thermite in the building and and through all this uh, how many people do you have to pay off kill or silence for it to maintain to, to for it to be a mystery 20 years later you know right. let's say maybe a thousand people you've got night watchmen you've got you know security guards you've got cleaning people you've got people working late you've got the the security services that are putting the thermite in the building you know you're you're probably over a course of you know six months or whatever talking a thousand people well the chances of keeping a thousand people quiet you know in the kennedy assassination you couldn't keep howard hunt quiet and he was one of supposedly six people that executed uh kennedy for the cia uh you know somebody comes out and talks in this case, with Epstein, go ahead. Sound like you're going to make a point. I was going to say, like, well, that's the part of the crap test of all conspiracy theories. Like, well, how many people would have to be involved to do something like that? That's where you start getting that. The 9/11 one is all the idea that it's more comp- compartmentalized. So, like, these beams and everything also need maintenance. All you have to do is just lie to the people who are doing maintenance to the building. So you right. can compartmentalize that. So you could bring the numbers down. Not not enough to make it go like, oh, ha ha, see? Not enough. You could bring right. it down, you can kind of get it. But like, um, and I think the biggest debunking of a lot of 9 11 conspiracy is just showing people like the Rhino sent the link of the, um, the the photos that somebody found. Like, it was a the person cleaning up the cleaning up the 9 11 massacre. And yeah, it was like, it was photos. like. Treasure. It was a CD or several CDs of photos that were just discovered in the last like month, mm-hmm. and it is thousands of photos from the from Ground Zero that just yeah. some dude took all these pictures and put them on a CD and like uh, he I don't know if he died or what, but uh, nobody had seen these photos since the guy took them, and it's every aspect of the cleanup cleanup process for months. Yep. So. The things you don't see, you don't see the molten pools. You don't see right. the, uh, uh, but like, well, look at the cuts. You you can understand the cuts because that's how they were cutting things to remove stuff. So so let's kind of walk through the, the Epstein conspiracy here. I mean, really, let's say somebody killed him. Let's not say who, Bill and Hillary, but let's not, let's say somebody had him killed. Uh-huh. Let's just talk about the factor of the amount of people that are involved in this chain of custody that you're going to have to 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 keep quiet you, you know you first you've got the people who are doing it be it you paid off a guard or you paid off uh somebody like a another inmate you know which an inmate wouldn't have worked because he was a, alone in a room correct you've got the security guards mm-hmm. uh, that that are on the floor not just on the floor not just the people who are responsible for that little space but the people you've got to get in and out of the building mm-hmm. Then you've got your paramedics that rushed him to the hospital. You've got your hospital workers. You've got your um, coroners, mm-hmm. you know, anybody who kind of handles the body after, after he's dead. Um, you've got to do a really convincing job because they're going to do an autopsy on him. I mean, you're talking 50 people maybe? Probably less than that. But Because here's the thing, right? All right, so the cop um, – so you've got the cop. Right, the former sorry, former cop, murderer cop, right? Right. His 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 the roommate that they moved out and was not in the room when he died. Yeah, you know that guy could easily pull it out because listen, like, all right, you're probably going to end up getting out of prison when you're blank blank. We'll put keep your freaking mouth shut. We'll put some cash in your bank, and you'll actually have a retirement when you get out. When you're old and gray, we'll make sure you get all the roids you need. <laughs> right. The prison guards, you know, uh, they haven't released their names, so you really can. Um, find out if they've got kids in college and they eat somebody. The paramedics and everything else that you can eat. Most people are, if you have the right type of asset, you could tell probably could get them convinced that this guy was going to like squeak and blur. He's got government secrets in him, and he's going to be putting down to do your do your job. Right, do your job. So now that we've kind of talked about oh one more thing and the whole like killing and then actually putting down if you learned nothing from the sopranos or any other uh, mafia movie you do it yourself yeah that's right so yeah. hillary put on a a, a a mustache and some aviators and walked in there and was like hello my name is hillary Clinton. I, i'm i'm guessing um bill's secret son right yes the <laughs> His his black son, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Takes him out. 
walks out because all, all the other white people they're like just another black guy the, not on the, the radar never noticed never if you haven't followed on social media bill clinton's uh alleged son it's literally like merry christmas i'm bill clinton's son happy birthday dad <laughs> like it's <laughs> he literally he'll post a photo he'll be like i'm just out fishing wish i had been fishing with my dad bill clinton like he <laughs> I laugh every time he comes across because it's like <laughs> every post i see he makes he makes it about being bill clinton's son and he's so cheerful too he's like he's not angry about it. he's like you know and just went to a hockey game wish i had gone to hockey with my dad bill clinton <laughs> really he does look a little bit like him but it is very funny yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I know I just added layers. Just so like now, people, are like, oh, it was his son. That's how good the good graces. <laughs> yeah, you got to go see Primary Colors. It's kind of an apocryphal tale of the Clinton campaign in '92. Um, so you know, now that we've kind of discussed the conspiracies and the uninformed view of it, and and and, and maybe who, how could this have happened? Let's kind of take a look at some of the facts of who Epstein was, what he's been charged with, and what happened that night. And then at the end, let's see if we kind of still feel like there's a conspiracy. Okay, okay so let's talk about who was Jeffrey Epstein. Now, Jeffrey Epstein started his career in New York City as a math teacher at the elite Dalton School, but in the 1970s, he went to work at the investment bank Bear Stearns before launching his own firm, J. Epstein & Company in 82. Now, Epstein was a math teacher, and he caught the eye of one of, I think, the student's parents. And he happened to be, I think it was Hank Greenberg, or somebody of the name Greenberg uh, at Bear Stearns, who was just like, this guy's like a genius. What is he doing wasting his time here teaching math? And so they elevated him. But he was, he was at Bear Stearns for a while and uh, was very successful because of his very strong mathematical mind. He's a very intelligent person and ended up being fired under mysterious circumstances at Bear Stern. So he then became, he started his own company, Epstein and Company in 1982. And that was managing people's money. Uh, so he had a couple things over over this. So we'll talk about it over, uh, as we go on here. But when Ep, while Epstein appeared to be wealthy, the source of his money was obscure. He has been widely called a billionaire, but Forbes disputed that claim, saying that he was more likely worth a fraction of that. Forbes wrote in 2010, the source of his wealth, a money management firm in the U.S. Virgin Islands, generates no public records, nor has his client list ever been released. Epstein's former clients include Leslie Wexner, the billionaire founder of Victoria's Secret, Epstein served as a trustee of the Wexner Foundation. Wexner reportedly bought Epstein a $13 million New York apartment. Now, it's deeper than that. Wexner bought the whole building. Yes. And Epstein had all of his people, his lawyers, everybody that, that uh, was kind of in his orbit lived in this apartment building that he owned and was basically gifted by Wexner. Uh, and... You know, you're paying a bunch of people and you're paying all these lawyers and you're paying for their housing. That's tremendously expensive. I mean, th this dude had, I don't know about what, what Forbes said exactly. We've got it in the show notes if you want to kind of go investigate that claim. But like the overhead that this guy had at certain points were, was just insane. Um, now, in a 2002 New York Magazine profile, Ep Epstein was described by even those closest to him as mysterious. With many of the sources of his immense wealth remaining largely unknown and with one acquaintance even comparing him to the Wizard of Oz, implying that there might be less behind the curtain than appearances would otherwise suggest. The article states, Epstein is said to run $15 billion for wealthy clients, yet aside from limited founder Leslie Wexner, his client list is a closely held secret. A former Dalton math teacher, he maintains a per per peripatetic uh, salon of brilliant scientists possesses no bachelor's degree for more than 10 years he's been linked to manhattan london society figure Ghislaine maxwell the daughter of the mysteriously d deceased media titan robert maxwell yet he lives a life of a bachelor logging 600 hours a year in various planes as he scours the world for investment opportunities he owns what is said to be manhattan's largest private house yet runs his business from a 100 acre private island in saint thomas 
says another prominent Wall Streeter. He is mysterious, a Gatsby-esque figure. He likes people to think that he is very rich. He cultivates this air of aloofness. The whole thing is weird. Now, in this period of time, he um, before he was managing people's when he was managing people's money, he apparently lost a tremendous amount of money for people. Um, after Bear Stearns, he went on to do something where he was basically accused of like a Madoff like pyramid scheme, and then started this company and managing people's wealth. Uh, I may be mixing some of this up, but. Uh, there's a lot of people who claim that he stole a lot of money from them in a pyramid scheme, which kind of comes into his estate being settled. So victims of his sexual crimes are going to go after some of his money, as will be as will the victims of the financial crimes. And so uh, th this this list of client money, basically, he lost. I think I think it was the Victoria's Secret Secret guy Wexner, basically said he lost me a ton of money. So he wasn't even necessarily good at that, but uh, he he liked to show off that he was wealthy, even if he necessarily wasn't. Right. Um, now, they mentioned scientists. He was really big into hanging out with scientists and like Stephen Hawking and funding a ton of research and funding a ton of scientific research. He had a foundation, the Jeffrey Epstein, the fifth foundation, which is best known for donating six and a half million to Harvard University for the Establishment of Mathematical Biology and Evolutionary Dynamics program. Couldn't, according to the New York Times, Epstein hoped to, quote, seed the human race with his DNA by impregnating women at his vast New Mexico ranch. Okay, that's a weird one. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, Epstein's vision reflected his longstanding fascination with transhumanism. Uh, that's, uh, there's a bunch of those transhumanist people in the libertarian movement. Like somebody hits you up and is like, I'm a transhumanist. It's like when some, but somebody says they're an objectivist, just run the other way. Epstein's vision reflected his longstanding fascination with transhumanism, the science of improving the human population through technologies like genetic engineering and artificial intelligence. Interviews with more than a dozen of his acquaintances, as well as public documents, show that he ins insulated or insinuated himself into an elite scientific community thus allowing him to pursue his interest in eugenics and other fringe fields like cryonics. Epstein told one adherent of transhumanism that he wanted to freeze his head and penis. Uh, okay. One scientist said that Epstein's goal was to have 20 women at a time impregnated at his ranch in New Mexico. Um, now, Epstein was known to associate with politicians on both sides of the aisle, including Bill Clinton and Donald Trump, numerous celebrities, and other people in the public eye, including Prince Andrew. He, he gained some measure of fame in the early 2000s for flying Clinton, Kevin Spacey, and Chris Tucker to Africa to tour AIDS prevention and treatment project sites. Now, all, also on these flights was a woman named Shantae Davis, who was also listed among the other 27 other women under massage dash California in Epstein's Little Black Book. Epstein kept lists of massage girls in various locales, a total of 160 uh, 160 names around the world. That was apparently his thing. He liked massages and then, you know, everything else that proceeded. Now, this little black book, you can find it on the internet. So if you want to see, like, Mick Jagger's cell phone number, Bill Clinton's secretary's number, Donald Trump's various cadre of numbers, Naomi Campbell, the supermodel. Uh, now there's a lot of famous people in this book, but, like, I have Yaron Brook and Walter Block in my phone, Noam Chomsky, people that I've interviewed in the past. Like, it doesn't mean that I have any type of relationship whatsoever with Noam Chomsky. <laughs> you know, so just because their names are in his little black book, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're, you know, engaged in pedophile-like activities. Right. Um, but it is, you can go see the uncensored uh, view. Uh, I thought about calling Donald and just seeing what was going on or, maybe, you know, hitting up some of the famous people. But then I was like, you know, do I really need to talk to the FBI tomorrow? Nah. Yeah, um, better things to do. Yeah, this isn't wall 2015, okay, people? <laughs> um, so Bill Clinton would go on to fly multiple times on Epstein's private plane. <laughs> Excuse me. On his plane between 2002 and 2003. Trump once said of Epstein, I've known Jeff for 15 years, terrific guy. He's a lot of fun to be with. It is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. So 
his relationship with Bill Clinton is much like his relationship with Donald Trump. So here's the thing. Epstein liked to go to parties, be in the middle of parties, get himself invited to parties, throw parties, fly celebrities around the world. You know, he, he really seems like the kind of guy who just wanted to be in the in crowd and had enough money to buy his way in. And uh, doesn't seem like a lot of people were like, yeah, we were best bros. Just, you know, maybe sort of like a hanger on or whatever. You know, his his association with Trump came from just being around in the 80s. They're both rich. They're going to some of the same parties uh, in the 90s. Same thing. And then in in 2003 or four, they have a dispute about some property. Mm-hmm. And Donald Trump never talks to him again. There's also uh, uh, he kicked him out of Mar-a-Lago because he hit on like an underage girl and revoked his his membership. Bill Clinton, you know, he would go visit Bill Clinton at the White House. He would fly him on his private jet. Uh, there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that either Bill Clinton or Donald Trump had any sex with underage girls. Uh, there's nothing that is concrete that is pointing to either of those things, and so everybody's kind of in conflating this Epstein thing to push their own personal agenda, which is either hating the Clintons or hating Trump, depending on what side you're on when really Bill Clinton and, and, and Donald Trump stopped talking to this guy in 2003, 2004. And there's not much evidence that there was any kind of uh, sexual impropriety. And one of the underage girls in fact said, Donald Trump never even flirted with me. Uh, So, it, it, it is it a, it is it unfair, for instance, for me to share Clinton body count memes? It's very unfair to Bill and Hillary Clinton because there's absolutely no evidence that they had anything to do with his his death or that they were involved in anything nefarious with this guy. Do I care about the reputation of Bill and Hillary Clinton? I care more about laughing than I care about their reputation. That so. That's why we share the memes and why I think they're funny. But do I think that Bill Clinton or Donald Trump had anything to do with Jeffrey Epstein's death? Not based on any of the evidence that I see in this. So that's sort of where I come down on it, Harry. I don't know about you or what what you may have read. Uh, Here's the thing. Citizens United was about people hating on Hillary Clinton and whether people can make money, you know, organization can really get together and make money talking about the awfulness of Hillary Clinton. People, this is like a known quantity. It just like for some reason people just let them just do this. I don't. It's toxic. It's sh- shameful. And no, I don't. No, no. It's it, their record. It's terrible and awful. And the political party that survives, you know, that lets them get away with any of it, they're awful. Right. So that's a little bit about who who Jeffrey Epstein is. So let's talk about the first case against and, Jeffrey Epstein. And one more thing, and the memes are bringing us all together. That's right. Once. That, that's you know what you're you're damn right, Harry. This is the first time I've seen America United since almost 2007. You know, and I'm just glad that there is a ray of hope in America because if we can't unite around a pedophile dying, then what are we <laughs> going to unite? We have lost it all. Like at least we could unite around the child molester dying. Like Right. Uh, yeah, the only people is like, well, I really just wanted him to stand trial and some people get some closure. But I'm glad he's dead and we didn't have to pay for it. Right. So the 2008 against uh, Jeffrey a case against Epstein, uh, he pled guilty to a felony charge of solicitation of prostitution involving a minor. Uh, now, this was a fairly light sentence, and this all resurfaced because journalists in Florida – started really going, why was this? What happened again? The Me Too era kind of brought this back into the forefront. Mm-hmm. And that's why we got it started picking up steam again. So um, he was accused of sexually abusing dozens of underage girls, bringing them to his home for massages during which he masturbated or had intercourse with them. Epstein was sentenced to 18 months in county jail. He served 13, 13 months in county jail and was granted a work release which allowed him to commute to an office outside the jail six days a week. He also registered as a sex offender. Epstein was able to sign a deal with then U.S. Attorney Alexander Acosta and uh, eventually former Secretary of Labor under Donald Trump. Uh, He resigned as a result of all this. 
Now, the FBI prepared a 53-page sex crime indictment in 07 that could have sent to, him to prison for life, according to the Miami Herald. Mm-hmm. Part of the deal, he cut granted work release to go to an office for 12 hours, six days a week, despite the fact that the Palm Beach Sheriff's Department prohibited work release for sex offenders. The deal was a non-prosecution agreement, and it granted immunity to any potential co-conspirators. The deal was also kept secret from the victims. This case started in 2005 after a woman reported to Florida police that a wealthy man had molested her stepdaughter. The tip led the Palm Beach detectives to investigate, and they identified multiple girls who said Epstein had abused them. The case was eventually referred to the FBI. Now, according to court and police records reviewed by Julie Brown of the Miami Herald, Epstein routinely had underage girls brought to him at his Palm Beach home where he paid them to give him massages. During the massages, he often subjected the girls to sexual abuse, asking them to touch him while he masturbated, touching them himself, and sometimes having intercourse with them. Epstein would then offer them money to find more girls for them. According to Joseph Recrae, the lead Palm Beach detective on the case, Epstein was essentially operating a sexual pyramid scheme. Now, Julie Brown, that reporter, identified about 80 women who say they were molested or otherwise sexually abused by Epstein, and some accounts suggest the total number was even higher, which I imagine it has to be. That's just in this county. This guy had a New Mexico home. He had homes overseas. He had the island. He had you know, the house in Manhattan. California. I mean, this guy had homes everywhere. I mean, this this kind of person is not just, well, you know, I'm going to take a break from my deviant lifestyle in Palm Beach and spend the next six months in Manhattan just clean and being normal. Yeah, sober up, you know, go to church a couple of times maybe. Right. You know, I'm, I'm here in my French villa, and I'm not going to misbehave while I'm in France. This is a place dedicated to purity. So I'm sure this guy has... Uh, a ton of victims that have never come forward and will not see justice now. Right. Um, so the, the, this kind of gets swept under the rug and Acosta's defense of the sweetheart deal was basically that this is what he could get and federal or local and state prosecutors weren't going to do anything. And so when they weren't going to do anything, he decided to act and this is what he could get. Uh, that was his defense. But, the Miami Herald in the, in the wake of everything just like resurfaced all of this reporting and said, Hey, this isn't cool. Um, and so in 2019, he was arrested at Teterboro airport in New Jersey on July 6th, after arriving back home in the U S from France, he was charged by federal prosecutors the following Monday in which he pled guilt, not guilty on July 18 Epstein was denied bail. He had previously said he was willing to post $100 million worth of bail. Now, Epstein was charged with sex sex trafficking in connection with the allegations that he recruited young girls for abuse at his homes in New York and Palm Beach. Epstein said that any encounters he had with his accusers were consensual and that he believed they were 18 at the time. The indictment, Harry, do you think that worked? Yeah, I thought they were 18. They looked 18, right, Harry? Yeah, yeah, they all looked 18. Now, granted, they all kept getting on Tumblr and talking about what they're going to do in class the next day, but, you know, I assumed I was college. The indict- And you see some of these photos, and you're like, dude. Uh, the indictment, however, states that Epstein knew some of the girls were underage because they expressly told him their age. In July, Jennifer Araz said in an interview uh, on Today that Epstein had forcibly raped her in 2002 when she was 15. The indictment also states that Epstein worked and conspired with others, including employees and associates, uh, associates who facilitated his conduct by among other things, contacting victims and scheduling their sexual encounters with Epstein. And that's the thing, man. Uh, his lawyers uh, at the time have all retained criminal attorneys. Uh, you know, the a guy like this, I was listening to Rush Limbaugh to kind of get his take on all this, and he was just full conspiratorial uh, on a lot of it, and it was the Clintons and all that stuff. He was entertaining the idea, but he was more... Uh, ironically, Sargon of Akkad, which you want to talk about, like cleaning up your language. Sargon gave maybe the best 20 minute breakdown. It's called the video is like the convenient death of Jeffrey Epstein. And it is just straight reporting about Jeffrey Epstein, his background, what happened. No conspiratorial, even a, a, even a whiff of it. Like he completely cleaned up his act so he doesn't get removed. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was this, it was better journalism than anything you've seen on, uh, seen on CNN. Uh, I just found that to be hilarious. Um, but, uh, you know, Limbaugh tells this story. He goes, you know, now, uh, li- listen, folks, I, uh, I, I don't go shopping. I'm too famous for that. So I, I never really, uh, have seen like the label of any food. I don't see the labels on foods. In fact, I don't. You know, I don't even look in my fridge, really. Uh, people bring me uh, my food. So I had some mayonnaise, and they brought me the mayonnaise in this little dish. Uh, and so you know, I didn't even see it. So I just happened to wander into the kitchen for once, which I rarely do. And uh, I opened my fridge door, and I look at the, the mayonnaise, and it says Hellman's, and it's uh, free-range eggs. Can you believe they're using free-range eggs for mayonnaise? And it was just like... He knew he was being out of touch. Like, he knew he was being a super rich guy, which is part of his persona. Mm-hmm. But, like, here's a guy who is so blown away in 2019 by a uh, free-range egg in his, in his mayonnaise, you know, which started coming around maybe 10 years ago. <laughs> like, you know, free – like, now it's, like, cage-free. We're, we're off the cage-free. So he just couldn't believe it. So here's a guy who's super rich, lives in Palm Beach where Epstein lives, has personal shoppers and cooks and all this stuff. Like all these people who lived with Epstein and worked for Epstein, these people are all going to be in a lot of trouble. And that's who William Barr, the attorney general basically said the other day, like the criminal case against Epstein is dead, but don't sleep easy. Um, so uh, the, this new case in New York looked like it could potentially lead to charges against some of the quote associates David Boys, a lawyer for some of Epstein's accusers, said, quote, we hope that the prosecutors will not stop with Mr. Epstein because there were many other people who participated with him and make the, made the sex trafficking possible. After his arrest, authorities searched Epstein's New York City home where they found a, quote, pile of cash, diamonds, and a passport from a foreign country with a picture of Epstein under the name in a safe. The passport showed Epstein's residence as Saudi Arabia. On Friday, July 9th, 2,000 pages of previously sealed legal documents were released by a federal appeals court. Uh, the document included depositions, police incident reports, photographs, receipts, and flight logs. The documents were filed as a part of a defamation lawsuit in federal court that Virginia Guffrey brought in 2015 against Gis- Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's longtime companion and confidant. Uh, now, in a sworn deposition, Ms. Guffrey said that she first met Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, the daughter of the Br- British publishing magnate Robert Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein in 2000 when she was 16. At the time, Guffrey was working as an attendant at the spa at Mar-a-Lago Resort. She said she was sitting outside the locker room, Mar-a-Lago, you heard that right, reading a book on massage therapy. 16-year-old girl reading a book on massage therapy around Jeffrey Epstein sounds like trouble. Uh, She said she knew someone who was looking for a travel masseuse. Uh, Maxwell says, if the guy likes you, then, you know, it will work out for you. You'll travel. You'll make good money. You'll be educated, Jeffrey Guffrey recalled. Guffrey took the job, and Maxwell trained her on how to give erotic massages, which she soon began providing to Epstein as his home in Palm Beach. She was also being flown on Epstein's jet to perform sexual services on Epstein's acquaintances. The word massage became code for sex, she said on the 2016 deposition. My whole life revolved around just pleasing these men and keeping Ghislaine and Jeffrey happy. Their whole entire lives revolving around sex. They call massages sex. They call modeling sex. Uh, Now, indicted basically in her story is Prince Andrew. Uh, I believe he's the brother of Prince Charles. Um, Alan Dershowitz, who actually, along with Mike Cernovich, weirdly, teamed up to, to basically get these documents unsealed. So Dershowitz said it would, it would basically free him. He sued. He's, he's all over the place saying, I didn't, I didn't do anything illegal, and I will stop at nothing to prove it. Um, I don't think there – I don't know if this was the girl that there's a picture of her with Bill Clinton or not. I know there's a picture of Clinton on a plane with Epstein, and there's a young girl. And that's kind of the pretext of, oh, well, see, Clinton was in on all this. But again, this Guffrey girl says, Trump never even tried to flirt with me. Uh, she didn't have anything to say about Bill Clinton. She, she named a bunch of other people, former senators, 
uh, uh, Bill Richardson of New Mexico was one of them. Um, uh, the former Maine senator, a Democrat, a uh, George, it's, it's slipping my mind, Mitchell. Um, so, so yeah, uh, uh, several very powerful people, but uh, like Bill Richardson is going to kill somebody in prison powerful, to be honest. Uh, neither is Alan Dershowitz. But Prince Andrew, definitely. <laughs> right, yeah. P Prince Andrew, please. Uh, <laughs> Prince Charles couldn't even get somebody killed at this point. The monarchy's so weak. So now let's move on to the death. Okay, so Epstein apparently died by suicide in his cell on August 10th. That was four days ago as of this recording. The official statement regarding his death from the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Quote, on Saturday, August 10, 2019, at approximately 6.30 a.m., inmate Jeffrey Edward Epstein was found unresponsive in his cell in the special housing unit from apparent suicide at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York. New York. Uh, now, this is kind of like a detention facility run by the federal government in downtown high-rise facility. It's like a supermax prison. It's where El Chapo was kept. Um, the shoe bomber, I think, was kept there. A lot of, lot of high-target people have been kept there. It's very um, well-guarded, uh, and, and it's a well-regarded prison. It's, you know, not, I don't think they've had anybody die there uh, except Epstein. I, I don't know if that's apocryphal or a lie, and I just saw it on Twitter, but um, very strong facility. Back to the quote. Staff requested emergency medical services and life-saving efforts uh, after they continued after they requested it. Mr. Epstein was transported by EMS to a local hospital for treatment of life-threatening injuries and subsequently pronounced dead by hospital staff. The FBI is investigating the incident. Now, uh, last month, after being denied bail, Epstein was found unconscious in his jail cell with marks on his neck. Now, apparently his roommate called to, he woke up and he, all this and called the guards. He's played a stun suicide watch after the incident and received a daily psychiatric evaluation. He was removed from suicide watch on July 29th and returned to the special housing unit. Now, just so you know, suicide watch is very intensive, very staff intensive. And so, you know, he was reportedly in better, a better mood and was feeling better. And so they removed him from suicide watch because it's so staff intensive, intensive, the two guards and the two guards that were watching him, basically they had, they were on their fifth day of overtime. They had worked eight hours already that week. It was a very understaffed facility that comes into play into my analysis after this. The U S attorney in Manhattan, Jeffrey S. Berman said in a statement that the investigation into Epstein's misconduct would continue pointing specifically to the conspiracy charge, which suggested Epstein was assisted by others who helped facilitate his illegal activities. Now, Epstein was supposed to have been checked by the two guards in the protective housing unit every 30 minutes, but that procedure was not followed that night, a law enforcement official with knowledge of his detention said. He hadn't been checked on in several hours. Now, Jason Stapleton get, did a great episode. I'll put it in the, in the show notes on this he apparently used to work in a prison and he's like this is very common these guys are overworked there's you know they have their rounds and they sit in their chair and then they get up they are supposed to walk to the end of the cell block and push a button when they're done with their rounds mm -hmm. and so instead of actually going cell by cell and taking a look they literally just walk over push the button walk back he goes what are any of us surprised by government employees being completely incompetent and lazy Yes, uh, yes. These are the best of the best of the best. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I mean, if you're a prison guard and you're un you're overworked, feeling underpaid, like, you know, you're on your fifth day of overtime, you're just, and it's overnight, you know, you're at the end of your shift at this point. This guy's pretty mathematical, probably was studying their timing, and he's like, okay, this is a good time because this these particular set of guards get uh, – tired mm -hmm. and so i have time to do it at this point so uh, but the the two guards that were apparently in charge of watching over him and checking him didn't do that um so because of its of his previous suicide attempt 
Epstein was supposed to have another inmate in his cell, officials said. However, the jail had recently transferred his cellmate and allowed Epstein to be housed alone, a decision that also violated the jail's procedures. It had been reported that the jail was short-staffed and the guards on duty were working overtime. One of the new details provided by people familiar with MCC was that one of Epstein's guards the night he died wasn't a regular correctional officer. A New York Times investigation published last year detailed this practice under which the federal prisons are so strapped for correctional officers that they regularly compel teachers, nurses, and secretaries and other support staff members to step in. So if you're a teacher or nurse at the, at the uh, prison, they're going to force you to act as a corrections officer uh, to fix the problem. So Bob Hood, a former senior official at the FB, Federal Bureau of Prisons, which runs the MCC, told the Times, the Bureau of Prisons dropped the ball, period. So, uh, so let's just kind of let's, – let's, let's dive back into the conspiracies – Okay, and now that we've heard the facts and heard kind of what we what happened, let's see if these conspiracies pass muster, okay? And then we'll give our own opinions, Harry. Now, many rumors have centered on what politicians may have known about Epstein's alleged crimes and whether some of them may have wanted him dead. The hashtag Epstein murder trended worldwide on Saturday, as did Clinton body count. Memes suggesting everyone fit from a fake suicide to an orchestrated hit job spread through social media. Joe Scarborough tweeted, a guy had information that would have destroyed rich and powerful men's lives and ends up dead in his jail cell. How predictably Russian. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio and presidential candidate said it was, quote, way too convenient that Epstein could no longer incriminate others. Quote, what a lot of us want to know is what did he know? How many other millionaires and billionaires were part of the illegal activities that he was engaged in, he told reporters. On Saturday, Donald Trump retweeted a video from a conservative comedian, Terrence Williams, in which Williams suggested that Bill and Hillary were responsible for Epstein's death. Lynn Patton, an official at the Department of Housing and Urban Development, also posted a headline about Epstein's death, along with the word Hillary, amid the hashtags, hashtag Vince Foster Part 2. Within hours of Epstein's death, hashtag Clinton body count was trending. Trump body count started trending as uh, now. Um, here's where I come down on it, Harry. Okay. The biggest conspiracy in this guy's death is that people believe that you can have a functional government managed by bureaucracy. You should never equate conspiracy when incompetence and stupidity will do. And from what it looks like to me, like the reality is that if you assign the government a duty, they will always fail at that duty because of bureaucracy and constrained resources. And almost every week when we examine these issues, we come back to the same place. Bureaucracy fails because they can't act quickly enough because they're hamstrung by r stupid regulations and laws and if it's a state agency for instance you know and your legislature meets for two months a year you've got eight months where you're just like well i don't know and then you guys spend years fixing those problems and so it's just like the immigration episode the reality is that Donald Trump flooded these facilities, didn't provide them with enough resources. They became, became completely overwhelmed. The bureaucracy couldn't act fast enough and per, really wouldn't act because of political reasons, political concerns. And so you have toddlers sh shitting where they're sleeping. You know, it takes six minutes for somebody to kill themselves in one of these cells. He's left alone for several hours. You know, it's, there's some dispute about what is in the cell with him. I wasn't able to really kind of find what exactly was in his cell. I saw that paper, that he had paper sheets, for instance. Yeah, um, yeah people say, like, yeah, those prisons give you the sheets that are like paper. They take your shoelaces so you can't commit suicide. Right. But you can take your shirt or your pants off. And I heard one correctional officer say, I saw a guy take his shirt off, loop that down through the floor drain 
and then twist basically until you got seven pounds of pressure on your neck and then you just basically asphyxiate or however you say it die and you know or if they're in a if they have a bed now most of these facilities that he was in had suicide proof beds so there's no place to like lean up against the bed on your throat or tie loop something around and then kind of lean forward like that's how robin williams committed suicide he leaned forward with a belt connected to a door you don't have the ability but even in a padded facility there's still a floor drain and a t-shirt and when you have somebody as intelligent as jeffrey epstein who was as prepared to have a saudi arabian passport and diamonds and passports and money you think that guy didn't google how to kill yourself in prison in a padded cell like come on i think it's totally the most reasonable explanation is that this guy killed himself if you are if you were on i think it's like you're 80 times more likely to die than gen pop if you're uh, convicted of child molestation like it's some insane number an order of magnitude like the the suicide rate is 15% for people who are charged with what he was charged with which is incredibly high compared to the regular prison population you know and not only are you accused of sex crimes and you know you're going to spend the rest of your life in jail you're a political football you're a meme you're the highest uh profile prisoner since basically Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in the last decade like I think that's a lot of mental what you tried to kill yourself three weeks ago. All the signs here point to the fact that the guy probably didn't live anymore and, right. and committed suicide and was intelligent enough to have the resources to do it. And the government, which was charged with keeping him alive, is incompetent and didn't get it done correctly because bureaucracy always fails the people that it's supposed to serve. And let me, get, let me put this to you straight. If you are a ward of the state, if you are in prison, if you are in jail, if you are in an ICE detention facility, prisoners have rights. And we are to take care of those who are, quote, unquote, the dregs of society. There's very little sympathy for anybody who's in jail. There's very little sympathy for Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein, more than any other human alive in the American prison system, deserved to be kept alive not just for his victims, but because he deserved to be taken care of. He deserved to be treated well. He deserved to be treated with his due right because he's a human being. And just because you were accused of a crime, he was, at this point, still innocent of his crimes. He was to be presumed innocent because he had not yet been charged by a jury of period. And so it's an absolute scandal that high-profile prisoner was able to kill himself. But it wasn't because he was killed or suicided or anything else. It's because the government failed in their basic duty of protecting Jeffrey Epstein. And not one libertarian should be surprised. That's the best story for us to tell, Harry, is that the government couldn't even do that right. You, you're going to tell me, give, let me give up my guns so you can protect me? You can't protect a guy who's on suicide watch. Like, suicide watch in their terms meant watching him have commit suicide. Like, <laughs> it, you know, like, that's the government version of suicide watch, I guess. So it, it's, it just is nonsensical. It's, it's the utilitarian argument that libertarians should always make. The government doesn't work, not because it's bad intention, but because bureaucracy constrains resources and is too inflexible to change. And so, therefore, the people it serves always end up hurting the people it's serving. Yeah. Okay. And Harry, if you believe that, you're, if you believe that the government's good and actually benefits the people it serves, you're a conspiracy theorist. That that's the biggest conspiracy here is that we think the prisons actually work. Right. Yeah. I think I think you hit it on the nail on the head right there. That the idea. Yeah. If you think that it works, I think that's why the conspiracy theory of all this has started going around because these is like a big, it's such a high profile case, and this is like right in someone's face of government failure. Something that should be so simple, so easy, and it failed, and it failed, 
you know so like even if no, any of the conspiracy theories are even let's say none of those come out he actually did kill himself let's say let's say that all happened right the government failed and it failed big time in front of all these people so all these people are reaching for this conspiracy theory just like people reach for the conspiracy theory of cons- conspiracy for 9-11 truth just because government shouldn't fail they, they should know this they should have sensors they should have jets all these protections should be in place it's not it's right. not did you think it is you know you know it's just, it's just kind of what people believe that it can work we can watch people we can protect people they can't you know it's it's sad to say just, they just can't they failed they can't hire people to be prison guards think about that for a second they're offering a job they can't find anybody they have to give them overtime right They've got a budget. They can just print money, and they can't hire people for that job. That's insane. And that Trump economy. Well, who, oh, oh, sorry. Who would who would want to do that job? To be honest. Exactly. Well, apparently, <laughs> like, uh, put, apparently, millennials who need a second job. Oh, uh, no. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's an awful job. It's an awful place because these things don't work because we're keeping these people kept up in cages. A lot of them, you know, they're, they're in these cages, which they have to be watched over. So who's really in the cage? Both of them. So it's that right. idea that everyone that we convict, we actually put in two people in this cage. Right. The innocent person who has to watch them and the guilty. <laughs> you know, I just to me, talk, like, baby. and that's why I like you just keep going, man. Oh. The idea of putting someone who is violent and dangerous to society in that cage, that makes sense. Put them away. You know, check them out of reality. Put them in a quiet space. You know, like, all right, you're, you're just too much. But some people, you know, can be rehabilitated. Some crimes don't have victims. And that's oh, just, sorry. That's, yeah. It's okay. I believe in you. <laughs> uh, I just, I just realized I messed up. I'm real bad. So <laughs> while you were talking, I got a I got a, a text, and I was like, "Oh, well, I messed that up." <laughs> so I I just my mind went completely somewhere else. I'm sorry, Harry. Uh oh. That was beautiful analysis. Is what I meant to say. Oh, thank you, thank you. you I'll I'll tell you off air. I'm just oh, okay. So you you are hitting record. I thought you were going to tell me that I just accidentally hit on record, Harry. No, I was just listening to you talk, and I was like, "Some ting Wong Ho Li Fook." <laughs> Beautiful uh, prose. We ruined it with the with the soundboard. <laughs> so, all right, let's give our final thoughts. I mean, for me, I don't believe that this that he was murdered. I don't believe that this was a conspiracy. I think the government just failed to do what they were supposed to do, like they always do. And we don't need to make it into something bigger. We don't need to wear our tinfoil hats when there's a perfectly reasonable, valid explanation. Uh, so that's that's my take on it. What about you, Harry? Um, I think what we're going to find out is that um, the... Um, how can I put this? That... I don't know. <laughs> it is all weird. And it's, is it wrong that I want it to be a conspiracy theory because it'd be goofy? Why do you want it to be a conspiracy? Because it would just be like, wow, all all this is wrong in the world. It's like, ah, finally, in your face, evil. Okay. So it's just like, ah, in your face, we can all get together and go after evil. Right. Right. That's right. what I want. I, I have enjoyed these last few days of all, everyone, no matter what political side they're on, they were on the side of this was a conspiracy. And knowing that this is going to end soon, it sucks. That This ride's going to – I <laughs> don't want to get off this ride, you know? Is it, though? Because I feel like we are just forever going to just – we're forever conspiracy land. I don't know, because uh, it could, because like I was talking about uh, going to the gun and knife show to buy a bunch of AR-15s at the, you know, at the end of the month, because if they get banned, they're going to go up in price, you know, so I'm just going right. to buy a bunch and just leave it up there. And one of the responses was, why would you need one? And, uh, you know, and I jokingly said, like, I don't know, I know, I know information about Hillary Clinton, so. Ah. <laughs> I was going to defend myself from my upcoming suicide. Well. You know? 
clearly that uh, that that beat- allegedly I don't re- I re- I, I want also that was a joke I do not have information for uh, that would bring Hillary Clinton to arrest someone that publicly known the- you, know, you know what else I forgot what I had someone write up a really funny beginning to this where we were going to talk about how we didn't know anything and I completely spaced that too oh. it's gonna be so good. We we get you want to edit that in you know so only the live people know we messed up. Nah. Oh, okay, that's nah. fine. That's fine. I I could maybe record it and splice it in, but at this point, people know. No, they won't. They won't know. No, I'm a failure. I'm a failure, and I don't deserve your love, viewer. It's okay. I can't wait till uh, what I'm most excited for is the future of Wall and all the stuff that you've been up to. The one thing I will talk about this for my final thought is I know you're probably like talk about the content. No, I want to talk about this. This is I, I really like that you're doing the Chris Bengel show. I can't wait until you get bored with doing it by yourself and just having people calling on Saturday and you find and uh, end up getting on some AM radio station somewhere, probably in like um, BFE Indiana. You know, just so you can have some more call in people. I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be totally fun. I'd I'd love to do that. I, I, like, I loved working in small town radio. Like, it was tons of fun to work, go into the radio station every day and come in on Saturdays, be there six days a week. Like, you're not really working when you work in radio. Like, it's easy. Excuse me. It's easy. And you're just super connected to the community. And it, it was, it was really a blast. I'd love to get back to it someday. Wow, Rob. Um, he's just he, he understands the hard work that you put in every day that's exactly right he gets it yeah yeah but yeah th- yeah that's what i'm saying like, like oh man, i'm just gonna miss this train but you're right he just committed suicide guards fell asleep it happens right it happens all oh, the cameras aren't working yeah cameras break dude you know <laughs> right especially at government facilities so they probably got the worst people in the world looking at something you know, and then and they're more of like, who are we watching? Prisoners in locked cages? Man, who cares? Right. It, I'll, it, fix, uh, I'll fix those cameras on Monday. You, the government employee sitting there in front of a bank of cameras playing Angry Birds, or the camera's broke and it's been broke for seven years and nobody's fixed it because they don't have the money to fix it. Right. Or that's you know that their union don't don't work doesn't have to worry about the cameras. That's a separate department. Right. What you know. like this? Come on, people, get it yeah. together. Yeah, or it broke. IT looked at that and said, meh, I'll get it on Monday. Who cares? <laughs> All right, man. Well, we got to finish up. It's good sure. talking to you. It's good talking to you people. Uh, and by you people, I mean the listeners, not Harry's people. Um, Harry, it's nice to talk to you. We'll be back next week. We're either, uh, there's like three things. I mean, I'm fascinated with Hong Kong. I've watched Les Mis like three times since uh the the airport people were singing can you hear the people sing uh i'm the economy's starting to take a a crap i've been saying for a a couple months now that i think the economy's gonna start turning um uh, i want to talk about police brutality we got all kinds of stuff coming up so stay tuned that's good by season yep all right thanks harry thanks listeners we'll talk to you next week okay no, it's gonna it's gonna be